Welcome to Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris, and today we're going to be talking about the velocity of electrons during a photoelectric effect experiment. And if you're not familiar with the photoelectric effect, go ahead and check out my video Introduction to the Photoelectric Effect first, and then come back and watch this video. So the photoelectric effect, right, just tells us about the relationship between the light that goes down onto a metal sample and the energy of those electrons that come off of that metal sample, which we analyze with an energy analyzer, which just tells us how fast those electrons are going. Now, strictly speaking, instead of telling us how fast they're going, it gives us the kinetic energy. But we can actually use the photoelectric effect experiment to calculate how fast those electrons are going, and that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna use this equation here, which connects the kinetic energy of the ejected electron, that's this guy over here, to the frequency of the light used, that's new right there. Uh, and the last piece of information we're going to need is the binding energy or work function of the metal we're using. So a common question that you might have associated with the photoelectric effect is to calculate the velocity of an electron. And so the question might look like this. A photoelectron is ejected from zinc, and then it tells us there that phi is equal to 4.3 eV, that's our binding energy. And it says the photoelectron ejected from zinc is ejected by a light with a frequency of 2 times 10 to the 15th hertz. And then it says, what's the velocity of the electron? How do we solve a problem like this? Well, I've broken down this problem into three steps. And the very first thing we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to calculate our work function in joules. It's very common for us to be given our work function in EVs, and we just have to convert to joules. And so that's a pretty straightforward conversion. I have the conversion factor right down here. It just tells us that 1 EV is equal to 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And so that's the very first step, is just converting this binding energy. So step one, we're going to convert our binding energy from 4.3 EV, and we're going to cancel out that EV by writing 1 EV on the bottom, and we're going to go to joules by multiplying, basically, by 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19th. And when we do that, what we're going to get is 6.88 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. Now, there's more decimal places than that that my calculator spits out. Keep all of those in your calculator and use them in the next step of the calculation. Okay, so now we gotta do some algebra. We have our work function in joules, but the next step is we're gonna set our kinetic energy equal to each other. So we have two expressions for kinetic energy. We have the one I showed on the previous slide, that the kinetic energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency minus that work function or binding energy. And we also have our expression which tells us that the kinetic energy of any object is equal to one half times mass times velocity squared. And all we're gonna do is use substitution to set those two equal to each other. So since we know that one half mv squared is equal to kinetic energy, well, we can just go ahead and set one half mv squared equal to this part of our other kinetic energy expression through substitution. So instead of writing kinetic energy there, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and write hv, or h nu I should say, minus v. One thing you gotta keep very careful track of here is your v for velocity and your nu for frequency look really similar. You don't wanna flip those around. We're trying to solve for velocity. And so I'm going to go ahead and rearrange that equation now for velocity. How do we do that? Well, we got to multiply by this 2 here to get rid of that 1 half. And we're going to do that to the whole side. And then we also need to divide by m to get rid of that mass. So that's going to cancel out our 2 and cancel out our m and left, leave us with v squared. And we're going to get v squared is equal to 2 over m times h nu minus v. Last thing we gotta do is get rid of this square square there by taking the square root of both sides. And so this is just basically solving our equation for velocity so that we can just plug in our numbers and calculate it. All right, so that's our final expression for velocity. 
And that's pretty much it. The last thing we have to do is just, after we solve for velocity, is plug our numbers in. Now, our velocity is equal to the square root of 2 over the mass. What is that mass referring to? Well, in our kinetic energy expression, it's always referring to the mass of whatever we're calculating the kinetic energy for. In this case, we're dealing with an electron. So we need the mass of an electron. And that turns out to be over here. And it's 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31st kilograms. It's important you're in kilograms here because that's the SI unit for mass. And that actually secretly is the unit of mass that's in joules. Joules, if you look at it closely, actually has a kilograms in there. So if you're going to have your energies in joules, you have to have your masses in kilograms. So obviously, sometimes when you get this problem, you'll get different units than what I've shown you here. And you just need to make sure that when you plug them in, your mass is in kilograms times 10 to the minus 31. And your Planck's constant, which I have written over there on the bottom right, is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. And then we multiply by our frequency. What's our frequency? Well, it told us this, that way back in the problem. It said our frequency is 2 times 10 to the 15th hertz. So that means we just got to multiply Planck's constants by 2 times 10 to the 15th hertz. And lastly, we subtract out our phi which we solve for right here, 6.88 times 10 to the minus 19th. So when we plug that all in our calculator, we're going to get our velocity. And I plugged it in my calculator, and what I'll get is 1.2 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. And actually, since our frequency up here has only one sig fig, our answer should only have one sig fig. So that means that we're going to drop off that point 2, and we're just going to leave it as 1 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So that's our velocity. So our electron shoots off of that metal moving really, really, really quickly, about a million meters per second. And that tells you how high speeds these electrons are moving at. A few notes here. This is a relatively simple version of this problem. Sometimes you can have velocities that are even higher. And if you have velocities that are really high, you can start to actually have to use relativistic equations. So if that velocity ever gets close to 10 to the 8th meters per second, that tells you you need to start thinking about relativistic equations. One other note here is that if you ever get an undefined number for your velocity, that is you have to take the square root of a negative number, I'm sorry, that's an imaginary, not undefined number. If you ever get an imaginary result for your velocity, that means that your frequency of your photon isn't actually sufficient enough to eject an electron. So this is how we can solve for the velocity of an electron coming off of a metal surface in the photoelectric effect. All we need to do is a little algebra and remember our kinetic energy expression in terms of mass and velocity. Thanks for watching Real Chemistry. If you have any questions, please ask them below. Please also subscribe to my station to receive updates about new videos and have quick access to my YouTube station.